Alright, welcome back. Welcome! Hey! We're here! We are picking up uh, with the group that went into the Crypt of the Everflame. Um, you have managed to thwart um, the bandits' um, attempt at getting the undead um, to cause tr trouble with the um, with the city of Kaysen. Now, your journey back to Kaysen is pretty somber and uneventful. And if you happen to remember Roldair, uh, this fine gentleman here, he is thrilled to see Demira again and seems to be gaining his sanity just little bits at a time. You finally return and you find that there is a celebration underway in your honor. And Mayor Uptal is there to greet you at the gates as you arrive. His joy at your return, though, quickly turns to horror as you tell him what's happened. The news quickly spreads throughout the town and the harvest celebration turns melancholy. The townsfolk don't blame you for, um, for the most part. It's basically, they're very regretful or about what happened and grateful to you that this new menace has ended. And this grand feast is still, had, still held in all of your honor. But it's not the same as it was in previous years. This year, many are drinking to help forget that they've lost friends and loved ones. And plans are made to return to the crypt and bury those slain townsfolk. But during this celebration, you are engaged by a Saigar, and he stops to talk with you just for a few moments. After he's introduced himself and explained that he's someone in the Pathfinder Society, he mentions that he might have a bit of work for you if you're interested. Seems like he's taking some interest in recent events, and it's pretty sure that his organization uh, would be able to do something about the tomb robbers that caused this mess. And uh, with your help, he could get to the bottom of it. If you are so interested, then we'll contact you in a few days. Otherwise, stay, enjoy the festivities, and uh, enjoy a little bit of your newfound adventuring prowess, as uh, you all are the heroes that you thought you could be. Eve is certainly going to enjoy festivities. Uh, she's going to enjoy them by finding some of the cutest town boys, surrounding herself in them, and getting them to buy her drinks or you know, fetch her drinks at the very least if she's not expected to pay in the first place. Although bonus points if they pay for them anyways, even though she could get free ones, because really that's the goal. Um, all while regaling everybody with the tale of how she fought, with very little um, inclusion about how the others perhaps maybe participated. So definitely self-glorifying, definitely from her perspective. You can't surround yourself with the prettiest boys in town when the prettiest boys in town are literally already in your group, you have. Mm hmm I'm sorry, what's your Christmas score? I don't fucking remember. Hold on. Oh, yeah, right. Seven. All right, so it ain't you. No, but he's egotistical as fuck. He thinks he's a pretty boy. Yep. I was about to say, I mean, the only two boys in the party are you and the Hobgoblin, so... To be fair, he's an elf, so I mean... He's an ugly elf, which is still pretty for human standards. That's fair. He might be pretty, but just a big a-hole. There you go. He's gorgeous, but he's a fucking douche. Oh, are you that, like, high school football player that knows he's popular, so he treats everyone else like shit? Are you Gaston? Yes. Exactly. He's Gaston. 100% Gaston. He looks pretty ugly to me. 
But I ain't never had any trouble with the women. You know I'm standing uh, right next to you, don't you? I know. Peyton would have plopped herself at the nearest, like, table with the food around her, but also a big old giant book. Just searching, mumbling to herself. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. He performed the great deed. It should have transformed him, but instead we got switched. It just, there's gotta be something more. Alright, well, um... Tanithil will sit down next to her and say, Alright, maybe I can be of service to you. you. You seem to be struggling with something, and, well, let's be real, I'm probably the smartest one in the village. So, there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to puzzle this out. Uh, lay your conundrum upon me, and we'll see what uh, what can be made of this. You know something about curses? Well, let me tell you about how much I know about curses. But before I tell you about how much I know about curses, what's the deal with your curse? It, it was... Well, see, the thing was, a, a little bit ago, this creature showed up, and it wanted my brother, and I told him no, and I did something, not entirely sure what I did, but in the end, we got cursed, and I got turned into the raven, and it was supposed to be that when a great deed was finished, we were to be returned. Is it contagious? As he step, takes a step back. Curses are contagious. Perhaps you could give me the exact wording of the curse, verbatim. I don't remember. Well, there's your first problem right there. You need to get a better memory. I was being turned into a bird! Yes, and I would imagine those last words would be forever. All right, Mike. <laughs> oh my God, Mike. <laughs> and I would imagine that those words would be forever burned into your memory, but apparently not. So, uh, let's see. And then he turns to the bird that I believe is still just kind of perched on her shoulder, right? He'd beat me around if that fucking like. For, okay, for those of you like Mark that doesn't have the sound equipped, he is occasionally playing the sound of a hot kind with the music. Okay. Ambiance is lost. His, his character's a hawk now, remember? If you recall, we had Gideon in the party, and then abruptly after we completed the grand task, he fucking turned into a hawk, and Peyton appeared before us, and honestly, it was a pretty good trade. Ouch. Uh, okay. Dude, you don't have great boobs. Look that at that picture. <laughs> okay. So I'm having a problem. I did not take enough notes on my sheet, and I've forgotten what the hell I'm doing with this class. Was I? Did I ever mention what prestige class or what I was going to multi-class into with this? No. Shit. Pretty sure it was Arcane Trickster. Or the only thing worth prestiging into on a rogue. Well, uh, I don't know if I was actually prestiging or if I was multi-classing into something else. I have a quick question for uh, the GMs. So we're on automatic bonus progression and the fucking feet fixes, right? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, would I be able to do Slashing Grace with an Elven Curved Blade? Because Slashing Grace is very specifically a light or one-handed uh, slashing weapon, right? But the Elven Curved Blade lets you use your um, dex when you're using Weapon Finesse, right? So it's one of those things that just kind of falls in the gaps there. You have to take a feat to be able to use it, right? The Elven Curved Blade? Yeah. Sort of. I mean, I'm an elf, so I get the weapon familiarity thing. So I, oh, okay, I get it for okay. free. Okay. Yeah, but but yes, basically, I just had to do it by being a very specific race. 
But it's a two-handed weapon, isn't it? Yeah, yes. I don't think it works with a two-handed weapon. You'd need, like, uh, Titan Muller or something, I would imagine. Well, no, I wasn't trying to uh, one-hand it. I was just wondering if it would be something that was possible, because you can already use the Elven Curved Blade with Weapon Finesse, which is typically only light or one-handed weapons, right? right? So I wasn't sure if it would be something that you guys would allow or not. Time for the GMs to go into a bubble. Right. <laughs> to the Chamber of Understanding. All right. Uh, yeah, let's drop down into uh, voice private GM. I can't remember how I was building this character. Based on your character intro, like... Mesmerist! I was going into Mesmerist! That's what it was. There we go. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I'm that good. Okay, good. You're didn't welcome. even have to say anything and you fucking nailed it. Good job. Thank you, Mark. You're a hero. <laughs> Three levels in a rogue and then into Mesmerist. Thank you. It's almost like you should plan your characters out further ahead of time. <laughs> To be fair, I had this thing planned out and what I was going to do, but I'm not going to plan it to level 20, because I assume my characters will die before then. That's nah, foolish. Just, just to a level, level 11 or so. Your judgment has been passed. You are okay. the weakest link. Goodbye. Alrighty then. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a no, I'm assuming. That is a no. Alright, no worries. I, I figured as much, but you know, better to ask. Oh shit, I can't take improved natural attack. I have to pick a different feat. God damn it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I just I need a plus four bab. I've only got a three. That moment when we haven't played this particular game in like three months and we're all like, what the fuck were we doing? Yeah, we're yeah. all scrambling. What the hell is my character okay, again? To be fair, we only had I've been week. procrastinating leveling <laughs> up because I could not remember what I was building to. I was like, I have magical knack. Clearly. I had some sort of plan. <laughs> A two session adventure right. will easily become three or four. But that's so back okay. to the helping me figure out my curse. Right. Well, since you don't quite recall, the gist of it seems to be that uh, regardless of what your previous understanding was. Uh, whenever you are able to complete some grand task, you allow your sibling, I assume he's your sibling, yes? Well, sort of. Sort of is good enough for me. You allow your sibling more time in this world as anything beyond your uh, associate, familiar, whatever he is, regardless. Uh, and vice versa. Uh, it requires some grand task uh, that clearly venerates you above the normal man and above, you know, tying your shoes in the morning. So, so long as you avoid uh, completing some grand task, you are perfectly content to stay among us, I'm sure. Yes. I, mean, I understand that if I complete a grand task, it would probably turn him back into a human and me back into the bird, but how do we just... It just doesn't make any sense. Well, uh, typically when it comes to curses and things like this, it just requires much more powerful magics in order to circumvent them. Uh, the sort of magics that we don't yet possess. But fear not, I have... A great deal of faith that as we complete these grand tasks and the two of you bounce back and forth like a... I'm blanking on a metaphor here. Two side to the game That's game? because you don't have a oh, high enough charisma to no, make a fine. good metaphor. <laughs> uh, as you two flip back and forth like a coin in flight, eventually 
the lot of us will come to a point where we can properly separate the two of you into your individual selves in, I would hope, human form. But don't quote me on that. Uh, makes sense. Sort of? Yes. That means I have no choice but to continue. Well, naturally. There's no way to go but forward. As always. And at that, she's going to take her giant book and just slam it shut. It's one of those kind of books that, like, when you get from the library, it's as big as your torso. Of course. Probably shouldn't have brought it from the library kind of book. <laughs> Sounds about right. The full English dictionary. That thing I remember as a kid was actually taller than my hip when I was a wee lass. Where'd that man go that was offering us... A job. Tan actually has a book just like that. It's just strapped to his hip at all times. No one is aware of where he went to. He kind of just melded back into the crowd after he first introduced himself. But you've been here mm. for a few days now. And since that, um, since that time... Uh, the events at the crypt of the Everflame and life in the town is just beginning to return to normal. The folks are still quite wary of the dark and worried that some overlooked undead fiend might still be stalking from the crypt out there. But uh, for the most part, um, everyone's calming down. Um, and it is at this tavern where you do get a, uh, a letter. Um, there's a uh, young, young boy who drops it onto your table and scampers off. Uh, out of here. Just yeah, purposely he, trying to scare him off. Yeah, he took a look at... Um, Grim. Grim, yeah. And he was out the door. Snagging the, the letter off the table and turning to his companions. who are probably sharing a few drinks as there's not much else to do in this town other than to drink at the tavern. Tears it open, muttering under his breath. Uh, it's about time something interesting happened. <laughs> All right. Well, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, the Tan says, well, go on and read it then. He does so. All right, to paraphrase it, basically he is saying, friends... Um, I hope that you will be ready for travel to the capital city of Nuremathas. And um, please be ready uh, with all of your adventuring gear. Um, I'll be waiting for you at the docks, goes on to say. What was it signed by? It is signed by Cigar. which uh, is the guy in the top right corner of the map. Oh, it is a C. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> it was signed by a cigar. It was very difficult to write, but they did it. Yes. <laughs> uh, what was the, the reason they gave for why we're making the trip? So when you first arrived back into... Um, Kesson, you realize that uh, the Pathfinder Society was interested in you helping find out the reason for the bandits that had gone in to this uh, this crypt, the crypt of the Everflame. And uh, for those of you that don't remember, one of the guys that was identified was only dead for three months was a cultist. Indeed. Naturally. A cultist of whom? Uh, if you scroll up, it's up there somewhere. Or did we know? Razmir. R A S R A R A Z M I R. I know him. What does Rakdor characters? 
Someone knew him. Yeah, one of you did know him, I believe. It might have even been uh, Gideon. It would have told you all. Who's got to sprung a ball around the lake? Nothing we can. Well, I hear the society pays well. Might as well find out what they want. Ah, another Sl adventure. Hopefully Slam this one will be dead. Slamming back his ale. As he, you see probably about three or four other tankards on the table next to him at this point. Be sitting here just drinking all day. Yeah, it's about time we got out of this town. How'd you get all those? Who served you? Well, are we you are old the enough to are... drink. You think they'd really be able to tell? He's a goblin. His face looks like someone repeatedly struck it with a... Actually, you know what? His face looks exactly like an anvil in the blacksmith. It's crazy. I never realized it before staring at you now and just how hideous you look. That <laughs> <laughs> Peyton will squint her eyes and kind of turn her head to the side. Think for a moment. I, I guess I can see it. Exactly. Dude looks like fucking pizza face over here. He, he yeah, doesn't. Even, sure. While you're discussing <laughs> this, like he doesn't even react to the comments. He's so used to this. Even then, should you really be drinking that much? Well, no one can tell how old he is because he looks like um, he's been beaten to death several times over. So it's not like they're going to stop serving him in the first place. They have no idea what it looks like when he's drunk. I guess. If it's going to look up, I stare at the elf. Just mouth slightly open, eyes kind of squinted. Don't bat your eyelashes at me, Thought. You're an idiot! Why are you so rude to her? What did she do? Elves are racist. She says racistly. <laughs> That's a okay. bit hypocritical, don't you think? I, I imagine that makes humans racist, too. Are they humans! Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. You're a tiefling. How obviously a tiefling are you? I can't remember. Well, I've got claws. Yeah, yeah but that's claws. it. That's the only thing I've I know. I've got cat-like eyes. Okay, well, I'm just now hearing this for the first time in like a month and a half. Do you have a tail? Yes, it's a tiger tail. Okay, well, in that case, it probably would have been... Well, so are whatever nonsense you are anyway, aren't you? I think. I don't know. I don't remember what I decided I had and didn't have. But in general, I, I probably have a, a look that makes me look a little bit less than human, especially in the eyes and claws. If you've got a tail, you ain't human. <laughs> Just well, saying. Well, <laughs> I can't remember if I actually decided she had a tail or not. I think that was one of the things up in the air. Do you have it as a racial trait on your sheet? Ooh, that's right. That's how I decide those things. Yes, I do. I do, in fact, have a tail. There you go. It's prehensile. Hot. Well, All right. I guess it's time for us to head out. Grab our things. Can we leave the elf? No. <laughs> he You're said he was going to help me, so no. You're unfortunately stuck with me. GMs, <sighs> remind me. Are we residents of this town for yes. a long term? Yep. This is where you started off. You have uh, ties to this place through various mentors. So that's you not unreasonable that we have our own dwellings. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Listen, so... I'm literally a showgirl in my daddy's questionable house of morals. So, uh, Grim, uh, you know, 
scratching his chair back against the, the stone floor and collecting his empty tankers, walks over to the, the barkeep or the, the innkeeper of this place, dumps everything uh, on the bar itself. And Do the GMs have a name for the barkeep or oh, yeah. free, uh, free license to make one up? Daddies? Frollman. Frollman? All right. Hi, Frollman. We'll be out of town for a bit. Drops about 15, 20 gold. Keep my room and keep people out of my room, will ya? Some things up there you don't want to mess around with. We'll do that. We have money from this. Oh yeah. What was our money? I've not added any money to my sheet. Yeah, I haven't either. I don't think we ever got the amount that we got paid for being badasses, if we even got any money at all. I think more, did we ever sell the items? I don't know that we ever actually sat down and sold our stuff. I have the Vonda Magic Missile, by the way. Okay. So you can only sell up to um, 500 gold pieces here in Kaysen. You'll have much better luck selling at uh, the next town, Tamran. Uh, don't include me in that loot, Mark. <laughs> Come on, it's not that hard to adjust. Yeah, Multiply Mike by talk. five, divide by four. Mike and I talked and I got my own loot money. Okay. Uh, in any case, uh, Grimwell goes up to his room and comes back down bearing uh, a, a strangely pieced together breastplate with hinges and uh, leather straps where normally it's just one solid piece and a huge hammer over his shoulder, bow and sword and shield and like he's coming down like a small armory. We'll keep the room nice and clean for you. Good. Won't be Trelvar. Uh, you look over and you see uh, the owner, Trelvar, with his daughter, Asina. You've known them all your life, basically. Uh, you remember and, uh, what happened just... last time when someone got in there? We don't need to have a repeat of that, now do we? Staring we... at the daughter pointedly. No, Mr. Grimm, not anymore. Good girl. I'll be back. We're heading over to... What is it? Aramathus? Tam Tamran is the uh, the capital of this uh, this province that you're in. So, we're heading so to you're Tamran. going to the main city. We're heading down to Tamran for a week or two, maybe. Fortnite, probably. We'll be back. Asina waves. Trovar nods. Dan's gonna go um, say goodbye to his parents, who probably would not even bat an eyelash. They'll just be like, alright, well, see you next week. Oh, you you get back and your parents are like really proud that you were part of the party that uh, corrected this terrible thing that was going on. Oh, good. I'm going to tell my daddy I'm using my vacation days. <laughs> to which he responds, you have no vacation days. Right. What the hell are you talking about? That is a hard sell right there. Business has dropped since you've gone. Well, yes, of course it has. I'm the best part of the show. Everyone loves sleight of hand tricks. It's way better than, you know, the other sleight of hand tricks of the girls on stage that come after me. Really? It's it's a show about me, so I understand. Well, hurry back or you won't or we won't have a business. Yes, sir. Sounds so wrong. <laughs> and Peyton. 
Uh, yeah, I will go home and grab my things and swap up my books. I don't remember what we decided about our parents, but... Yeah, I think we only had a dad left. Yeah. Who... I don't remember if we decided if he liked me or not after it came out who my mother was. Tell him I'm off. Try to bring his son back and head out. All right. Well, he's happy that to see you because it's been a long time, of course. And uh, he still doesn't know exactly what's going on with this curse. He just thinks that uh, it's strange that uh, he saw his son a few weeks ago, and now all of a sudden his daughter, and now his son's gone. I, uh, hopefully the next time I come back, uh, he'll be with me. He does kind of like an awkward hug because you guys never quite got along so well, but he, he kind of feels obligated. And once you're in there, it's it's like, yeah, he he's genuine and he means it. Aw, he's a good daddy. Well, I did not just say that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, daddy. You've been hanging out with Thieve too long. <laughs> True. It's and a bad influence, but she's a strong influence. <laughs> Taya, what are you doing in town before we leave? Uh, Taya will just kind of go around and enjoy her fame for a little bit. But when it's time to leave, she'll swing by uh, her parents' place, explain the situation, you know, tell them that she loves them and that she'll be back as soon as she can. Uh, before she swings over to the blacksmith shop and lets the blacksmith know as well that she will be gone for a while uh, and picking up some uh, some new gear as well All right. now you are what race again Tayo yeah oh god I can't remember give me just one second you're an Ifri Ifri okay yeah, Ifri. so you your parents are both Ifrits here in town no, humans. Uh, I was adopted. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So they wish you uh, you well and all the best of luck. And um, of course, they're sad to see you go, but they're wanting you back soon. And they're not actually interested or uh, too excited about you getting into all this uh, adventuring business. But they know it's something that they can't stop you from doing. And you get over to the uh, the blacksmith shop and you collect the things that you're looking for. Who's got a bag of holding? I am not strong. Oh, look at me. We're level three. Yes, so we have a bag of holding. I remember giving you guys one. Yeah, we, we got one as loot. Uh, by uh, default, just give it to uh, Grim as probably the, one of the strongest ones here. Either Grim or Taya. Suits me. Alright, so as I'm approaching the docks, uh, you see Peyton walking up. And she's got books. You know that comical situation where someone's got them just stacked up and they've got their chin on top with their hands as far down as they go? Mm -hmm. You know that comical situation where a spiteful hobgoblin loves to trip people who look like that? <laughs> so she's going to start walking down the street like that, and as soon as she sees Grim, she's going to go, Grim! Grim, come here! Please! Please, Grim! Oh, the bag! The bag, Grim! Please? What are you going to do? Make your own boat out of them? They're, they're for my research. They're one. all very important to me. You can bring one. No. I have to bring them all. Look, I know you've got the bag! Rolling his eyes and giving like a long-suffering sigh, he's like, Fine, I could always use more kidling. Better not burn my books. No promises. He pulls the bag out, holding the, the neck open. 
I'm gonna try my best to just drop them in without dropping any. Ah, thank you. See? All convenient now. You can barely tell the difference. Uh, we'll see how long they last with everything else in there. Grim, don't mess with my books. <laughs> no promises. It's not a long walk to the docks. Um, you're there relatively soon, and after this exchange, here you see Saigar standing there, awaiting uh, the rest of you. Will you all be meeting there together, or just uh, stagger in? It's probably trickling in, I imagine. Unless anybody made like an actual effort to go with her, Tayo would probably just go by herself. Okay. So Grim and um, Peyton manage to get there first. And uh, there's a bit of a silence at first after he's greeted you initially as he's waiting for everyone to get together before he does his prepared speech. Uh, Mr. Sagar, um, as possible members to the Pathfinder Society, uh, do we get access to the Pathfinder Society's library? Impossible research notes? Oh, uh, yes. Well, you have to be in a, uh, a particular standing with the society. So there is a, a, a certain level that you have to be to go into it then, huh? Yes, you, you'll need to gain some renown within our society to have access to the various perks. Well, I guess it's it's inevitable then. I, I need words, to do no great scrubs. things. Scrubs? We're not scrubs. Oh no no, not scrubs at all. Neophytes, you're you're the beginners. You're you're the ones with hope in their eyes. It's exciting, really. If he had eyebrows, he would raise one. Okay, so my decision is made then. I will do my best in the past sorry, this is hiding. You can tell that uh, that gets a smile out of an otherwise very somber face. Taya is the next to, uh, to approach. And uh, Saigar dips his head in acknowledgement of Taya's uh, presence. He kind of makes small talk as the three of you are standing around. It's kind of a nice, uh, if not slightly chill day, but the sun is out and the, uh, the water is uh, relatively smooth for this area. And how about the last two? You be arriving together or staggered? Probably together. Right. Oh, is that yeah. us? Do we bicker the entire way? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. You can't just go around telling people they're ugly. Trust me, they already know. You can see it in their eyes. They already have low enough self-esteem, and people who have low self-esteem don't generally spend money on you. Who's looking for them to spend money on us? That's me! Ridiculous. I'm not looking for anyone to spend money not on not, me. Okay, well oh, then, be less selfish. <laughs> Why? Because I like it when people spend money on me. You're not really helping your case here. So is this You're not helping or not? your case either. <laughs> You're the one trying to convince me of something. I'll be as rude to people as I like. They no. deserve it. No, okay, they don't deserve it just for being ugly. Trust me, there was many things people deserve to be made fun of over. That's not one of them. Come on, bro. See, this is where our opinions on things differ, I believe. 
Well, yes, this is where you're wrong and I'm right. Yes, well, you keep telling yourself that, and I'll keep telling people that they're hideous. Ugh, you're impossible. And your ears are hideous, too. Look at them. Look at all that cartilage. You could get them clipped on something. Your ears are literally as long as mine. No! Can, can, can we please not fight? You're not here. This is just on the way. Oh. I thought you would have reached here by now, but that's fine. I mean, we have days of this exact same conversation, I'm sure. Just over and over and over again. It never stops. This is just what we do for the next three days while we travel. Beautiful thing. <laughs> We're really bonding. But we do eventually get there. All right. When you finally get there, Saigar once again, with a bit of uh, small talk, wishes you a, uh, a a good afternoon and hopes that you have a, a very pleasant journey to Tamran. Uh, he then explains to you that he has a friend in Tamran named Reginar who could help. He happens to know the city well, and he's been keeping an eye on these masked followers of Razmir. And he's looking at you at that mention uh, to see if you react to it at all. Will anyone um, be trying to be uh, holding back anything um, at that mention? No. Uh, Cigar is a society member, right? Yes. Oh, we're all on the same team. Okay. Is this Fred and our friend here is part of the society too? Yes, he is a ranger. Uh, interesting. I'm sure we'll get along famously. So what we need from you is to of course make your way to Tamra and learn what you can about those tomb robbers and if possible Recover the amulet fragments, so they can be returned to their resting place. And you realize that um, one of the main reasons, and it had been explained to you, uh, one of the main reasons why the ever the tomb of the ever crypt, or whatever the crypt of the ever flame, um, <laughs> was put in place, was because um, Kassan was one of three adventurers who uh, found a an incredibly wealthy city um, years ago and uh, the key to this was actually a an amulet that was broken into three pieces and two of those pieces were in that crypt two of them yes. you only got one so we, we possess this or missing one lost you we possess, possess a piece. one shard, we need two more, correct? Right. There are three shards of this amulet. You've recovered one. You assume somebody else has stolen the uh, the second, and you have no idea where the third is. Actually, Kassan told you guys it was with, uh... I posted it. Oh. Where? Um, in Galarian. Yep. Um, the last part was given to Aramain, an elven sorceress that was part of their group. Where that person is, we don't know. Gotcha. Ah, I see it. Sorry, I was looking for an everyone tag, so I skimmed over it. Ah, I see it. Alright. Um, and then he looks, um, in back of him to make sure that the ship is still there. And you see a rather large river barge uh, with a, a dwarven um, sailor at the at the helm, who's staring down upon you all, um, kind of looking bored. He's got a long gray beard. Uh, he doesn't have a hat on, and it's basically a big shiny chrome dome. He's got a large nose and he's smoking something. Oh, what is the stealth hook? One of the what? Stout folk. 
you have any brains, don't call them that to their face. But that's what the books call them. Dwarves. Stout. You'll be traveling on this... This black mist. Uh, Cigar explains. Nice name. It's headed straight for Tamron. It's got a shipment of ingots from Skelt. It'll make the journey swift and easy. Oh Once God. again, I want you to find Reginar. Once you reach there, he'll help you. Where do we find him once we're there? It's a good possibility he might find you. If he Ask doesn't. around. Hmm. Well, I suppose we have to get started then. Although I'm not particularly looking forward to a long voyage stuck with this lot. I guess we'll have to just make do. You're not the one stuck with both of you. While you guys are discussing this, I have left and headed to the boat. Whatever end of the boat people end up with... <laughs> I'm not going to be that guy. Never mind. <laughs> Ahoy! Permission to board? The captain uh, nods his head. You can tell he's kind of quiet. He doesn't say a word, as a matter of fact, until uh, you step aboard. And then you can see that his first mate um, kind of does a bit more of the talking, even though it's kind of poorly. Um, he doesn't speak common very well. Uh, it's another human, actually, that comes up and helps you cross the, uh, the small plank to get aboard and takes any baggage that you have that you're willing to uh, part with. I think you mean able to part with. We have quite a bit of baggage. <laughs> Most of it is uh, Eve's, but we're not going to talk about that. I'd whistle, but that doesn't really translate well over uh, Discord. Faith with. As you get there, you can see that uh, this barge is probably about 60 feet long, about 20 feet wide. It's a good size. It sits low in the uh, in the water. And uh, there's a, a large um, stack of these crates, which you can only assume contain those ingots that they spoke of. Uh, you can see in there, uh, in the port of the ship, there is a uh, an open door where there's a simple kitchen and... Um, in the other, the starboard side, you see a place where you can uh, just rest. There's some cots set aside um, to sleep all of you comfortably. Was there any kind of, uh, I missed some of that, but is there, is there any kind of uh, boathouse or cabin type <laughs> thing? Like a, anything with a roof or high point? Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's towards the, uh, the front of the ship. Uh, without making too much fuss, uh, Grimnall would love to climb up to whatever the tallest point is and chill out there. Okay. Oh, this is this is grand. Nice big boat. I bet it it just doesn't rock at all going down the river. Nope. We've got enough weight here to keep us steady. Taya will quickly run and grab one of the uh, bottom bunks, claiming it as her own. That's it. I take that top bunk. Are you sure you want to be above the fire hair? Well, she'll be toasty at the very least. I have fire resist, I think. <laughs> yep. I'm good. I'm good to sleep above the fire person. Don't be expecting much trouble, says uh, the captain. By the way, my my name is Walden, Captain Warren. Now, well, hello, Captain. He uh, he bows slightly. It's nice to have you aboard. You see, we don't have much trouble with beasts on this river, but that's not saying that we don't have trouble at all. See those 
Ratner and Faith Barges. They've been giving folks a bit of a trouble. And then you have the the Malthani privateers. Seems like they're just looking for victims. Haven't had too much trouble with them lately, but just keep your eyes peeled, will you? Trouble? You know, just asking for what doesn't belong to them. At least they're asking. Gives us a little bit of warning. We'll just have to answer their question very directly, pointedly, even. With arrows. Yes, thank you. Eloquent. From the looks of you, I think you get your point across. Shoving off, then. Well, I do like shoving around a little bit. All right, the ropes are untied, and the boat is on its way. Sounds disappointed at the untying of ropes. Yeah. Well, you know. At least the river will toss me around a little. That's right. He'll get jostled some way or another. Here you have Kassan. And here is the boat. Now your journey is to follow the river down and then stay within a mile of the coast to get to Tamarin. Okay, so we're going east and around. Gotcha. And it's, it's, I can speak English. It is expected to take uh, maybe a week, maybe a little more. Probably a lot slower once we get out to sea. Yes. Well, as far as like day to day, um, Grim's going to be making a point of keeping watch. Grim's going to help keep watch. She's pretty good at that kind of thing. Can you reach in the bag and hand me the ecosystems, ecosystem of rivers and actuaries and how erosion affects them? Like how high up am I on the boat? You are about uh, eight feet. Okay, so it, it literally is just a, a push barge? Yeah. Okay. In fact, let me show you. We're going to be together for a week on this shit? Yes. Uh, Why did we agree to this? This seems foolish. <laughs> does, does the ship ever go to shore? for like supplies or for the evening or does it just keep pushing on it does not it has enough rations and um what not to to make the trip okay and the crew is actually there the crew is here yep grim please the book grim reaches into the bag of holding um, thinking just the concept of book and pulls out whatever it happens to be and throws it back down to the deck at her feet. Thank you. No, Grim, this is the wrong one. Book's a book. No, they're different. Grim, I need ecosystems of rivers and edgeways and how Erosion affects them. Grim? Yeah, but with what you get. Grim, I don't want to read the history of paladins. Criminal uh, goes back to keep and watch, tuning her out. Grim. Grim. Grim, please. Just over and over and over for the entire. 
Eve's too busy, um, you know, flirting with everything that moves <laughs> that isn't dinner party. That was beautiful timing, Mike. <laughs> Grim! Grim! Three days later. Grim! <laughs> Eventually, uh, Tanafil will just beam Grim in the back of the head with uh, probably just a sling bullet. Not shot from a sling, just, you know, pulled out and thrown in his general direction. And say, give her the damn book so she shuts the fuck up. Hey, you ruin all my fun. <laughs> he reaches in and grabs the appropriate book and chucks it down to uh, Tanithil. It's a particularly heavy, hefty book. <laughs> that might be quite weighty to catch from 8 to 10 feet up. Well, it's a good Rip. thing. Rip! doesn't catch it. He just lets it drop to the deck and then picks it up and kind of flips through it very quickly. Uh, I need to refresh my memory about what I'm able to do with this archetype at this level. I don't think much of anything. But we're going to find out. Yep, nope, it's fourth level. Then I can start eating books and getting benefits. <laughs> literally eating books. I forgot we did that. Yeah. I love it. I Wait, love what? It. I am the tome eater. Right. Occultist right. archetype. And I'm the shy bookie. It's gonna be good. Alrighty. All right. So you have these books things straightened out? Yes, I now have my books that I want. Well, thank you, Tam. I, I want to take it to... Am, is it in a way that I could... Sit, is this the back, back over here? No, this is the front. It's so weird to tell. So this is the front. And the captain is in the back with his hand on the rudder. Okay. Uh, is it sitting deep enough that I can take my shoes off and like just sit on the edge with my feet in the water? Yes, but you'd have to do that towards the middle. Like right here. Uh, actually, that's pretty high. Uh, oh, well, I know what you mean. Here okay. we go. Okay. It's kind of in the middle is the lowest point. All right. And I'm you can sit. squeeze between the two, um, the rowers. Yeah, there you go. I'll squeeze between the rowers. Not even like paying them any attention. Just sit on the edge with my feet in the water as I read my book. All right. Yeah, they're not very talkative either. In fact, it's pretty quiet. Um, after three days, you realize that you are now heading outside of uh, the river. Uh, this is the Torrendel River. And you see the captain taking the boat about uh, a mile away from shore. He tells you that uh, one of the reasons for this is to avoid the uh, the rock outcroppings and uh, sandbars that are frequent to this area. A little while longer after you're out in the open sea begins steady rain it kind of plagues this journey but the waters remain relatively calm in spite of it all and you can see that the the barge handles the uh, the deluge fairly well and in fact even though the rowers are not protected by the the inclement weather um, they're used to it. They don't even worry about um, any protection for the rain. They just kind of row through the, um, the steady pour. So Tanithil is going to use this uh, this downpour 
as some good time to do some proper brooding, generally around the, the front of the ship. He just kind of stands there and stares off into nothingness and just generally broods, you know, as edgy people do. Nice. Yeah, this is this is prime brooding time. You are getting at maximum effect here. Excellent. Taya will spend the most of the time that it's raining inside. All right, it's a uh, really close quarters in here. Uh, there's a few. There's two cabins underneath of where you're currently sta- standing. Um, one is a uh, a kitchen, like a galley, small galley. And um, the other one is for um, where the bunks are. About midday, uh, something odd happens. Uh, as Tanithil is brooding, Grimnall is going about his business. Uh, Peyton is reading books. Uh, Eve, what are you doing during a typical day of sailing um if it's not raining then i'm on the deck reading a book if it is raining then i'm in the cabin in my hand i thought he said eve i did oh i'm sorry i my sister was talking it's, at the same time it's, it's an afternoon where the the rain has stopped temporarily it's not all about you Ryder. god i thought i heard peyton uh-huh sure anyways no i'm kidding um, typically Eve is going to be, you know, just hanging out on deck, looking over the railings, keeping an eye out, uh, right. chatting up with captain and other crew members. All right. You know, generally making herself seen, harmlessly flirting. All right. So then you would be back with the captain over here. Meanwhile, Tanithil is up at the front, brooding. Uh, Grimnall, what do you do during the day in the middle of the ship? Um, probably, uh, rain or sun. Oiled cloaks being what they are. He's probably just going to... Sit quietly, uh, whittle on a chunk of wood that he brought with him. Uh, some kind of big shape materializing out of the out of the wood as he goes. It's still extremely rough by now. All right. So I imagine you're probably sitting on one of these uh, benches. Yeah. Uh, again, whatever the the highest point is, i.e., yeah. away from water. Oh well, the highest point is up here, above the uh, the cabins. And that is where he shall be. All right. Yeah. This center part is lowest. Does Grimnall not like water? All right. Taya's inside. Grimnall's outside. Tanithil's outside. And Eve is outside. Um, I'll need a perception check from Jess Grimnall, as Peyton is, has her nose in her books. Tanithil can't see anything, I'm guessing? Um... Are you looking towards the the water, like in front? Yes. Where, where are you facing? Uh, directly in front of the ship. Okay. All right. Then you would not notice um, something like this happening. Um, nor does Grimnall, as you are startled, kind of out of your reverie, uh, the brooding stops for a moment the um the whittling stops for a moment and the books aren't as interesting just for a moment as you see a horrifying view of hundreds if not thousands of little crabs crawling up both of the oars on the um the side of the ship and they're completely um covering the uh, the oarsmen. Uh, these two right here. And it looks like there's just a little train of these things going up from the oars 
right onto them, and they're screaming in agony. What well, will you do? They're all for initiative, obviously. <laughs> they're screaming. That does alert me. Yeah, this uh, this music does not match what the fuck's going on at this oh, point at all. Oh, I'm, I'm changing it now. <laughs> oh, okay. I was gonna say. It's just a matter of finding a good crab combat score. <laughs> Under the that. sea, everything's better. It is wetter. character definitely has way too many macros. <laughs> Damn, Grin. So you, you are all alerted. Just can't find it. Hold on. You're all alerted that something is going on at this point. Oh fuck, I meant to fucking buy a bow back in town before we left. And I meant to get masterwork uh, armor, but we can't have everything. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Rip. This is excellent crap fighting music. Right? Oh, oh, those poor rowers. Those poor rowers? Rowers. Row, row, row your boat. Row, row. Well, that looks like a swarm, so I'm out. Yeah, bye. <laughs> bye. Time to abandon ship, boys and girls. <laughs> See, I have a, uh, I have a spell for this. Yeah, I have something that could fuck up some of these fucking rowers. <laughs> But it's gonna yeah. fuck up the rowers too. I ain't got shit. Because uh, I get to know one spell per spell level. Uh, you didn't sort of initiate? Yeah, there you go. I gotta refresh. Well, plenty. Refresh. Alright, so these are like little things, right? Yeah, these are diminutive size. Um, just from, like, just seeing them, like, do we know what's going to be effective or not? Like, if you uh, in you real life do... see something that small, like, do you think it, the sword's going to work on them? <laughs> you doubt it. You might be able to crush two, three, maybe get lucky with five, but there's over a thousand of these things. Yeah. Um... So, yeah, Grim's going to, to look at that, and uh, he's going to... I don't know how much action this takes to unstrap something from your backpack, but he's going to take his bedroll off of his backpack that's sitting next to him on the floor next, uh, that he's leaning on for, like, a pillow. And he's just going to take that rolled-up bedroll and just try to kind of, like, swing it and like swipe them off the boat just kind of like a rolled up newspaper swatting at them okay I have no idea what kind of roll that would be uh, you can just give me a uh, regular attack roll melee Generic attack melee? okay let's just say he'll get up here Okay, so you're getting down to do it. Uh, I'm jumping down in front of them to uh, just swipe at the, the leading edge of these things, trying to swat them back off the boat. Okay. And just give me uh, a d4. Plus strength or just raw? Uh, plus strength is fine.
appear okay. in the bedroll. Yeah, you can see a few of the crabs just being knocked, flying into the air and splashing into the water. Anything else? He's gonna yell out. It's like, It'll help up here. Freaking crab swarms. Buttons. The EOT's not doing anything. Yeah, I, I switched it for you, but uh, I'll probably need to restart it. Oh, it worked. It's like the one time I actually used it. Nice. <laughs> All right, so Taya hearing the screams of the uh, Ormen and the call for help from Grimnall is going to burst out of the cabins and assess the situation before charging forward. To right about there, and then using her shield to get the most effective, like, surface area in squishing these crabs. Alright. You can do a melee attack roll also with the damage of D4. Would you prefer I do that or a shield bash? Oh, yeah, if you got shield bash, that's fine too. Alright, as you shove the shield into the, the mass and try to push and make, dredge your way uh, into it, you see quite a few of them gripping the edges of your shield and not letting go. As you pick your shield up, you see at least ten dangling crabs there. Could I try to shake them off, or is that oh, yeah. too much of an action? Yeah, you can... You can uh, Go ahead and shake them off relatively easily. Alright, I do that. You see that these things are staying put as you hear the uh, the screams and the cries of the men that uh, now have tried to abandon their post but aren't getting anywhere. They're kind of clawing and crawling on the, uh, the seat that they were on, just covered in blood and crabs. Tentative. So, this is going to be a little bit of a weird one compared to all of the others' nonsense. Um, Tan's going to turn around and see a big, giant swarm of crabs and abruptly go, oh dear, I haven't prepared for this. And then also, just as abruptly go, well, that's no matter, we can try and do something silly anyway and uh, kind of sweep a hand out uh, as he draws up his tome that is always strapped to his side, uh, just letting it kind of fall open to a random page covered in all manner of eldritch symbols and, and uh, horrible vistas scrawled across it as the hand that he sweeps out glows a sickly green and he intones very dramatically you're not done yet as one of the corpses of these guys who's just been consumed by the crabs i assume they're dead dead right they are dead dead okay cool perfect uh so one of the corpses abruptly lurches up to its feet and then just kind of falls on the crab pile i it grasping corpse but uh it <laughs> is gonna body slam some crabs because I ain't got shit else, bro. I got nothing. This is the only thing I can do to these. So, I'm gonna hope this does things. What's the, uh, what's the spell called one more time? Grasping Corpse. Uh, it's a combat maneuver. Uh, yes, basically. All right. All right. So this thing gets up, and it jumps onto a pile of the crabs, uh, and they are still swarming it, and it is undaunted. 
is trying to uh, to smother. Of course, it's only smothering one crab, and it's doing an excellent job at that. It's kind of what I figured, but I mean, at the very least, it'll help to keep the crab's attention. Yeah, that that crab is crushed at this point. Oh yeah, I just meant the whole swarm. Hopefully, they'll be like, "Oh, this one's still moving. Better eat it more." Oh yeah, it is. Excellent. Crabs are continuing to uh, to go up its leg onto its shoulders in spite of it standing. Perfect. After which point, Tanithil very uh, swiftly snaps his book closed again, the uh, sickly green glow dying out across his hand as he says, Well, I've bought you a little bit of time, so good luck. All right, Eve. All right, well... So, Eve is going to not have to get creative, because Eve is a planner, and Eve is going to chuck some, uh, let's say an acid flask into this little spot, you know, intersection right here, so that it Thanks. hits all this. Because I, I came prepared. Well, that's not nearly as exciting. Obviously, ignore the sneak this onto everything. Didn't roll well, but you know, I did some damage. AoE damage versus swarms is doubled, so... It is. Oh, fancy. Two points. Ah, ah, ah. And uh, you do get sneak attack. I get sneak not, attack off that? Not on throwing weapons. Not on fast. Oh, this is not 5e. That's right. I mean, technically, I could get sneak attack. Jeez, Mark. Is there something on it that says I can't do it with thrown weapons? Mark is not the GM. Don't ask him these questions. Ask Mike. <laughs> Fair. It's a bad you are within 30 feet, and you're acting before... It... Oh, no, it already acted. Yes, but she's totally flanking it. Look at all of this flanking that's okay, happening. The flanking is not happening. <laughs> I don't think you can sneak attack yeah. for him anyway. That, that was more my thing. Yeah, they're, they're not going to be able to do I that. was arguing the throne thing, not the swarm thing. Regardless, though, um, several of these things are smoking from the acid and uh, no longer moving. Good. Peyton, you look up from your book. Yeah. Crabs. Crabs. Oh, oh dear. Um, there's lots of them. Oh, okay. Are they're, they're dead? Are they? Yeah, okay. And she's going to pull up, hold up her hand. And we're gonna light this fucking boat on fire. <laughs> and as soon as she does this, she's gonna look down at her hand, look at the boat, and go, Oh no! Water! Water! Nice. That'll end the turn. And now looks at this and, and cries out, Fire! Fire! On a boat! Kenny's gonna try to swat more of these uh, spider crab things. That may be burning now? I don't know. Like half putting out fires, half swatting crabs. Why are things on fire? Burning hands. Peyton has uh, created a fan of flames. Ah. After dropping a book. And many of these crabs burst. In a, uh, in a blaze. Um, I don't have this showing, but they actually crit their save. Wow. But what is the damage? I don't see it on here. Is that hey. at the bottom? You oh, went full okay, cool. squeaky random crunchy sounds there, honey. Robotic. 
Yeah, so it's like half damage, but it's double damage for AoE, so it's kind of the same damage anyway. An 860 would have been better than an 8, but I'll take an 8. That's a good question. Like, what's the order? How about now? You're fine. Beautiful. Okay. So the order is that uh, first they save with the reflex, which halves it, so it's four, and then it doubles, or, or then it goes to fifty percent for the. Um, Oh, so it's only six. Double or yeah. is it half again? I think it's half again, but let me double check. Worm takes half again damage 50% from spells or effects. Okay, so 1.5. Alright. But still, that was a, uh, a massive opening that you have created now. And it is Grimnal. Yeah, so half swatting flyers out on a boat. Ooh. And half uh, slapping crabs back into the water. His, his bedroll is just flailing away with this thing. What's up with you and bedrolls? Alright, D4. Alright, so in doing that, several more crabs are flung off the side of the ship that are still on fire. Uh, you also fling a few more crabs into the corpse that Tanithel had raised, uh, which, of course, the corpse now is a, a flame. I'm gonna f uh, fi finishing okay. that. I'm gonna five foot away from the burning corpse because that seems like a wise idea. Okay. Stop, stop, and roll. Ah, shit! My display driver just freaked out. All right. Damn. So Taya, seeing this corpse on fire with crabs surrounding it is going to quickly bring up her shield, charge forward, and just knock it off the boat. Do you require a uh, check for that, or is just... So you're you're knocking what off the boat? The on-fire crab-covered corpse. Corpse? Okay. Yeah, that is a... Uh combat maneuver. Only in Pathfinder do we encounter a crab-covered on-fire corpse. <laughs> Heard of crabs that itch and I... burn before, but dang. Do I, uh, make it? You absolutely do. Alright, with that off so you are bull rushing this thing um it is not going to take an attack of opportunity i assume you don't have improved bull rush right uh powerful maneuvers okay good so you push it five feet back flies over the side and you are now in the midst of a crab swarm yeah, I kind of figured. I assume that was my uh, standard action. Yes. Alright. You are now standing <laughs> in the middle of the swarm. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that attack as it automatically hits you. As crabs are just steadily climbing up your legs and 
you probably have about a hundred of these things all clamped down upon your skin as you sustain seven points of piercing damage. Tanithil. Um. Yeah. So you moved that uh, corpse off of the thing so you could get at it, or because it got off the, it got knocked off the ship. It's it's knocked off the ship. It's in the water now. Well, fuck. Uh, it's full of a corpse. Yes, but I don't have another one of those prepped. Is the issue. Ah. Um. All right. Let's see. Yeah, I really don't have much of anything that I can uh, do here. Um, I guess I'll see if there are any, like, Crab traps are on the sh ship. <laughs> I don't yeah, know, dude. As a matter of fact, there are. All right. So Tittle kind of look around frantically, and as his eyes settle on the crab trap, he goes, "Aha!" and then lurches over in that direction, uh, grabbing the crab trap, and just kind of hurrying over here to try and scoop up as many as he possibly can into the thing. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what that would actually. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, CMB. Uh, that's gonna go well, I'm sure. Where's my fucking CMB? Just start fading them off of Kaya into the trap. Oh yeah, this can only go well. Sounds right. All right, uh, you managed to get uh, quite a few of these crabs inside of the trap. However, the um, the door jams, and they're oh. climbing right back out of the trap. Fuck. Oh, can, can oh, I guess I'd have to do that next turn. I was going to say, can I throw it, but yeah. Anything else? Unless I can throw this fucking, like, crab overflowing trap off the ship, I don't have anything else. We'll say that um, you were trying to throw it, but because the door is stuck, your hands got stuck also in the spokes. So you went to throw it, and it just flings a few crabs overboard as the rest of them are inside the trap and outside the trap crawling onto your arm. That's kind of what I figured. Eve. Alchemist Fire sets things on fire for real, doesn't it? It does. All right, well, Taya, you're in the fucking way. Taya, Taya, what? Taya, no, why are you in the way? Uh, Taya, Taya, this is to duck, Taya. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to throw some more acid in here. Duck, Taya. Ooh, I miss anyways. All right, do we have that uh, grenade? That's a silly question. Of course we do. Which square were you aiming at? I've been aiming for this intersection right here. Got to be a square. I was pretty sure that splash weapons could be aimed at intersections. I'm clearly wrong. I need more consistent jamming in my games. Well, in that case, I would mean I would have been aiming for that one if you're making me go by square. All right. So then it still hits. Convenient. Well, I mean, either way, it's either going to be uh, 
So I guess this one is the one I re registered as furthest away from uh, what's your name. Yeah. Ah, yeah. All right. Yeah, not only does it take the initial damage, but it also takes splash damage. And so does Taya. Peyton. All right. Oh no! Oh no! Why aren't they dead yet? I should have killed them. Uh. Hmm. Um. Can I identify these? Yes. Nature check. This is a crab swarm. You have uh, not seen anything like this before, but you've heard of a crab swarm that, if there are enough of them, they develop a hive mind to some degree. Very strong, move together, um, and are very tough. Okay. Any weaknesses? The typical weakness of a swarm, you know that uh, area of effect spells and damage um, hurts them right. quite a bit. And usual weapons do not do anything to them. Alright, so I'm gonna angle this in a way so it doesn't hit Taya. Which would be like straight line this way and then curve this way. Gotcha. Alright. More fire! Oh, I hope we have some water! Since we're surrounded by water. <laughs> Hush! Oh, for a second there, I thought the uh, first mate next to Eve was a zombie. No, no, no. You can't aim at an intersection, and apparently you just go around and it changes what intersection it's at. It works the exact same way. Yeah, I, I, I posted that in the text. Okay, well, then it landed there. I want that. I thought you were summoning a phoenix or something. I actually would make a good creature token in of itself. <laughs> is that how you're doing it? Yeah. Is, is this guy still alive in here? He's not anymore. Oh, I thought they were both dead. <laughs> well, technically, technically, he wasn't actually in a square there, so if he wasn't a square, he'd be in this one and he'd be fine. It's fine. It's fine. It is fine. As it sustains more and more damage, uh, let me see how agile these thousands of crabs are. This piece looks very dire. <laughs> A dire crab swarm. Damn! Yeah, their other one was 24. So they kind of part the sea of crabs before the fire comes, and then uh, just only the edges catch. And of course, they probably taste really great right about now. Yeah. But we got dinner tonight, guys. Enforcements. Well, Bedroll seems to be effective so far, so he's going to keep at it. <laughs> I have nothing else that can actually do anything against these things. And she now ruin your second Bedroll. Yeah, your Bedroll is now on fire, by the way. That's fine. I'll get another one. Maybe it does, does, does it do it two extra fire damage? <laughs> you think so. You think you're doing a lot of good. You just see crabs fly by the fives and tens. The fives and okay. tens and a swarm of thousands, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
It's like scooping water out as it flows right back in. <laughs> Anything else can no, criminal. <laughs> I regret not buying flasks. Alright, so I assume Ty is still covered, right? Yeah. Is there anything that I can do to shake them off? Yeah, you can step outside of the pool of crabs. Okay, I didn't know if they would just still stay attached to me or not. So. Not in a swarm, no. Right, Ty is going to step back, shaking off the last bits of crab, and continue with smashing them to bits with her shield. Okay. Melee or uh, shield bash. Okay. Crabs move up. Could they instead not do that? Oh, shit. Yeah, fuck. Um, alright. So... Is there damage being taken here? Or what's the deal? Yeah, I'm just trying to, uh, to move this thing real quick. But, um, what happens is uh, this thing moves up towards the bulk of the other living bodies and uh, gradually climbs up the legs of Tanithil and Taya. And there is an attack made. However, ignore the attack roll, as it means nothing. Right, it's just going to happen. All right. Ow. And I can... Uh, I can roll that twice if you guys would like, or you can both take that damage. I'll, I'll set precedent here. How would you like to do it? I'm good with just rolling it once. Yeah, whatever right. is in there just takes the damage. Tenethe. Uh, well, what will it take to get this stupid fucking box out of my hands? Because this was a terrible decision. Literally, yes. Just no, no, no. Wrong. Bad crab. try the shoe technique uh yeah he'd like to just uh, if at all possible hurl this fucking box of crabs in his hands the hell away and then move all right play a shoe technique the shoe might be more effective uh what is it going to take to lob this box of crabs off of himself and into the water uh just a simple dex check you say simple, but I feel like this is going to go poorly for me. It <laughs> yeah, cannot it be that simple. Lo and behold, it was not simple. That was a six. Grim, uh, there's a box that just flew over your head, and a few claw, a few crabs dropped on your shoulder. One's dangling off your earlobe. Anything else, Tanithil? Uh, did I succeed? Yes. Great. Yeah, there is a box full of maybe 15 crabs that just got flung overboard. Wonderful. Then I'd like to fuck off over here and uh, see if I can find another box. All right. Eve. I, apparently my button's not working well. Anyways, I'm saying, Taya, Taya, why why are you still in there? Taya, you're making this really hard to... Just, uh. 
and I'm going to be aiming um, for the you know middle intersection of them again, you know, right in there. All right. With what I believe is my last acid flask. It ended abruptly. I found a uh, combat for crabs. You did not. Look at the name of the, uh, the song. Crab Battle. Wonderful. All right. So that acid flak flask hit its mark. Dramatic. That's some pretty dramatic crab music. I'll say. Anything else for Eve? By the way, these things are still on fire. Most of them are on fire. Um, half of them are all smoking with this acidic. Um, these holes that are uh, just dissolving into their shells. Good. And that brings us back around to Peyton. Oh no! Why? Why are these dead yet? Oh man! Mm, Taya, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You're in the way. Wow. Fuck me. <laughs> Your magic, inherent magic, sensed your hesitation. Oh, nice. Hey! Alright, that is six. Taya, you need a, uh, dexterity save, or a reflex save, man. Right, so Taya, yeah, you are engulfed in a fan of flames. Um, and you can see that the rest of the crabs are completely scorched at this really uh, powerful uh, shot of uh, fire. And yeah, you just take it on. Yeah. Despite what people think, Taya is not fire resistant. <laughs> Stop, jump, and roll! to the crabs yeah is your hair usually on fire yes is that the end combat yes combat is over the crab menace has subsided not even looking for a bucket I'm just gonna start like splashing water onto the boat to put out the fires is Taya still on fire like non herself fire. I don't think uh, you're ever. No, you're set you're not on fire. on fire. Okay, that's good. You're scorched a bit. Yeah, Grimnall's just going around the boat. You hear a resounding stomp now and then. Swat of the still burning bedroll. There's a few crabs that are that have made it that are just skittering across the deck but they don't cause any uh concern so uh good news is dinner ty is gonna walk over to one of the benches and just slump down exhausted as the crab pitches you in the ass as you sit down <laughs> Yeah, you still have one or two just crawling in the back, clamped onto uh, your shirt. Well, that was um, terrifying. Yeah, terrifying. Let's go with terrifying. I'm going to hold the cook crab up to Gideon. Um, 
now that we actually have a, a moment to stop and think, if Grimnal were to examine the crabs, is there, can we determine if this is normal behavior? Or if, like, we know these crabs? You've never seen crabs act like this before. Yeah. But you've never seen crabs in this um, this much of, uh, of a size, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Grim will certainly not want to be on the water anyway. Uh, Ty is going to look at the captain and just kind of see what his reaction to this whole situation is. Yeah, so he is standing at the edge um, up there, and he's kind of like got his hands on his knees and he's kind of crouched down and he's just looking looking uh surprised and he just shakes his head and then he stands up and he begins the slow clap well done thank you i think assuming that's not sarcastic oh no those creditors were eating us all yeah. Speaking of, the crew members who were uh, consumed, are there remains on board, or are they non-existent, or did they like get overboarded? One got overboarded, the other one is uh, basically a bloody skeleton right. with char marks. And acid eating through its bones. Yeah, Ty, I kind of pushed one overboard. Yeah, that was kind of rude. It was on fire. It was helping. What do you want to do with this one? Whatever his name was. String to the skeleton. Pitch him overboard. Probably for the best. Do the crew members react to this question at all? No, actually it's strange. The crew members are very silent. Um, and they're continuing to row. Of course, this one is no longer rowing very hard at all. You can tell he's just kind of stopped. And making these two do the brunt. And the ship has um, gotten a lot slower since then. thinking that there's probably a uh, imbalance of manpower here. Grimnall is going to kind of nudge the skeleton over with his boots, sit down in, in his spot, and grab the oar, looking over to the sailor to his right and just nodding. All right. He looks over to you, and uh, he doesn't nod at all, but he just stares blankly, and then stairs to the front back to his toil and try to match his strokes as synchronously as possible all right i'm Kaya suspicious of same. this peculiar behavior yeah i mean can i like really look at one of these guys yeah like, are, they, are they avoiding eye contact or no, they just, they look like they have just the hardest life ever. Their sun, their skin is all like just leathery, um, completely wrinkled. They've been in this profession for years and years. Um, you're surprised they actually still have the muscle strength to do this thing, but uh, that's pretty much what they do day in and day out. So they look like they've just accepted their lot in life. Yeah. Okay. They're not like zombies that they're the control of the captain or anything. No, they're they're human. They're alive. Suspicious players. Suspicious. <clears throat> All right. More like paranoid, but yeah. The captain says, as you're eyeing up the uh, the oarsman, he 
can tell that you're curious about it. And he says, yeah, that lot, they, uh, they pretty much do what they're told. Yeah, I, I can see that. I was just curious. I wasn't sure what was going on. Yeah, you won't be having too much of a heart-to-heart -heart with them. But they get the job done. Okay. Uh, how much longer until we reach our destination? Oh, another four, maybe longer days. Oh. Um, but you did well. Dinner? Want some crab? Fresh crab. The river's bounty. Broiled. Looking, Do you have some lemon? Looking down at the deck floor, Grimnall's going to look over to Peyton and just ask with a raised eye ridge, You're going to have some ribs with that? Where would you get ribs? Looking down at the bloody skeleton on the ground. Oh! No! No! It's wrong! Don't eat people! Tell that to Eve. You don't eat people. Eve eats people? In a matter of this definition. <laughs> we'll get out the diagrams later. So let's get back to work. <laughs> She's just gonna start collecting crabs. <laughs> Preferably the ones that don't have acid in them. Yes, the ones that have acid I'll throw overboard. All right, Hi. Talia. Go bug the captain and find out what he wants to do with this corpse. <sighs> Gonna bring disease if it's just left here. And Taya will get up from her seat and go over to the captain. Ah, uh, yes, lass. What can I do for you? So... We were wondering... What are we gonna do with the dead body? Ah, well, looks like a barrel at sea. Poor old Tack. That's the way he'd like it. We'll say a few words. Make some way to dignify it. I'll alert his family when we get it back in. So, you want to throw it off now, or you want to throw it off later? No time like the present. With that, uh, Ty is going to go over and just kind of heave it over. But what about Frida? Oh. Yeah, the captain and his first mate uh, assist as well. And the captain says a few words about Otek and Dav, who are the fallen oarsmen. We ain't had none finer, he says. But you there, pretty one. We appreciate you yeah. stepping up. Oh, he, no you problem. Could tell, you could tell he was talking to Grimnall, actually. <laughs> no, no problem. I heard the word pretty one. It must have been me. Yeah, he has a, a pretty big grin on his face, and then he makes his way back to the rudder as well as the first mate, and you continue on through the night. Uh, finally, uh, the rain starts to uh, to come back in a soft drizzle. And what will you be doing for the remainder of the day? Rowing. Uh, cutting up the crab to eat. Uh, 
and and rowing, of course. Not rowing at all. Not rowing. All right. The sun sets and vanishes. It is now dark. The rowers have um, begun their their sleep. So you're kind of just drifting, and now the uh, the captain has gone under uh, to the the quarter to his quarters as the first mate uh, begins his shift of steering the boat through the night. Well. Definitely want to take one of those uh, night watches shifts. Okay. Yeah, he's going to turn in for the evening because he got punched in the face by crabs. Eve right. is selfish and will retire for the evening. But, uh, oh. Um, okay. Uh, Grim, wake me up when it's time for my shift, I guess. No one else is going to help. Um, Ted will help. He just is taking a uh, a bit of a rest first. So he's not <laughs> first. Gideon. Gideon, can you fly overhead? Just keep an eye on things. Taya will eye Grimnall with, you know, a look that says, or that asks if he needs any help. Sorry, I missed some of that. Uh, basically, I'm giving you a look that is asking if you wanted any help with your watch tonight. Uh, we should all t- we should all watch. Who knows if one of those things are going to be nocturnal? I don't trust this to be a safe voyage anymore. With that, Taya will retire for the evening until she is woken up for her. Uh, shift all right yeah so are you go ahead ahead. ask gideon to keep an eye overhead and then i'll retire wait for grim to wake me up for my shift all right (laughs) and the night goes by uneventfully uh, you wake to the uh, the sunrise. It is a gorgeous morning as the uh, the water reflects the beautiful orange hues, and you find yourselves um, in good spirits. Uh, you are getting closer to your destination, and you have once again proven yourselves uh, true hardy adventurers. It is day five, um, and it gets quite boring on this boat. Um, the excitement of the crabs has waned and now it is just continuing listening to the the oars watching the water um, hearing the wind at some point Grimnall will uh, ask Toya to come grab one of these oars the more people we have rowing the faster we get there and get off of this ship I will not. I think that's what he said. I said Toya, not realizing it was Taya. It doesn't matter. Close enough. But yeah, Taya will nod and head over to one of the oars. Alright. Yeah, it is helping as the boat does pick up a bit of speed. Now that there is an equal number of rowers on each side, uh, they can uh, go a bit faster. And it goes through another day. Um, after six days of travel, uh, the captain comes down. It is uh, about mid-afternoon. And he says, uh, Well, you know, if we push hard, we can get there right about dark. We'll reach the city. Um, and you can tell he's a bit edgy. 
faster we get off this boat, the better. Now, this particular area is not quite safe. But I would like to reach the city tonight. The Malthuni privateers usually make patrols around this area. You know, the Malthuni crown has just given license to a number of those privateers, basically pirates under the employ. So... I imagine you're asking us to uh, jump in and assist and hopefully speed things along. That is, if you don't mind giving up half of all your gold when they come aboard asking for their tax. We'll be glad to assist as best we can. We should push through as hard and long as we can, then. Just get there quickly. Alright, how would you like to balance it? I tell you and Grimnol on the, the back row. The crew, 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 crew. Adventure, adventure. Just so, like, if we're in the middle of rowing and, like, something happens, they can keep rowing balanced while we ha we get up and do something. I know I'm nitpicking, but I can, I can conceive of a situation where that would be a factor. Really clever. Those particular token images. Um, but yeah, like if it helps to to push through further, like overnight rowing or something like that, because you know, we like take shifts or something, just to keep rowing while the crew sleeps and vice versa. Okay. Yeah, you've been making excellent time because of that. Otherwise, I don't have any other additions to it. All right. Anyone else have anything? Uh, I don't have anything that can help, sadly. Any, any scouting magics or to help keep watch? Uh, Gideon, we can fly up. Fly overhead. Yeah, all right, so um, he does. And returns to you and tells you of a small sailing vessel approaching soon. Uh, is the boat incoming? What Someone kind? sailing? Faster than us. I, I guess we should just be ready. Did I get a direction from behind or from front? Uh, from the east. At that, Grimnol will nod over to Talia, and he'll stand up from his oars and start slinging on his, buckling his armor on and slinging his shield and stringing his bow. All right. So technically, from this side because we'd be sailing downward around the coast. And you said east is not from the coast, so technically... Probably doesn't matter too much. <laughs> yeah, no, just, just picture it as up is north, south is down, west is okay. left, east is right. Okay. Would anyone mind terribly if we took a five? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. 
great. I just gotta hit the bathroom and I didn't wanna, you know, leave as soon as combat's about to start, so, you know. Party break! Alright, so what, uh, let's see, it's 45, what do we got, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Not even that. I'm cool with 10. Say 10, because we never, when we say 5, we never take 5. <laughs> Works for me. Alright. Ah, that's fine. That's fine. We can always order more. Uh, uh, of sure. course, it's it's at this moment that, um, kind of with a plop, right in front of Bumble, is this platter with you know like a little um, lettuce bed underneath this uh, this rather dismal looking fish. Oh, yeah, yeah, have it, yeah, have it, yeah, have it. What oh, happy day! That? Oh, this here is the best delicacy in Westgate. It's a, uh, it's our blobfish special. Not many <coughs> order it, but uh, we we had one on reserve, fortunately enough. As even the cooked version of it has this pungent aroma. You can basically see the scent vapors kind of coming off of it, and some of you kind of have to, you know, catch yourselves. Yeah, uh, Arux is, is leaning way back away from that thing. Yeah, it's a deep sea fish. It probably does not smell the best. And, and Bumble's just sitting there with his hands flat on the table, like a little, small little line of drool coming down his chin as he's just looking at this thing with bright, wide eyes. Do you mean to tell me that you're going to eat that? Oh, yeah. I've been waiting for this. My goodness, you are much braver than I thought. Have you ever eaten it before? Oh, yeah. A few years ago, when I was a little, when I was a little chilling, I, I came through town. Well, I, I intentionally came through town, mind you. It's kind of dropped me off and left me here. But I, I was in town and, and I have one of them, someone kind enough to provide, provide me about to eat. Oh my goodness, it was so good. Oh. Uh, I will take your word for that because that smells really, really bad and works looks even worse. And as he, uh, as it's set down in front of him, grabs the, the small uh, cooking knife from his belt. Uh, yeah, everyone carries a cooking kit. And he looks around and he's like, uh, you might want to sit back now. It tends to, to, to squirt a little. At that, I will stand up from my chair and take two steps from the table. Kind of like a cacophony of chairs scooching over arise as the words leave his mouth. Some like individuals like visibly kind of like hunching away. <laughs> like I'm sure there's definitely some people who are just sitting there in like morbid fascination, like someone's actually gonna eat this thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Rx is one of them. Yeah, Lud Lud is over by the counter. He's just kind of got like one hand on his face. He's slowly shaking his head. <laughs> so he he cuts into it, and like one of the eyes just kind of goes squirting off. And bounces off the table. <laughs> you you and, hear this like, ah! It's the person just kind of flips out. I'm out! I'm out! <laughs> ah, GG, I guess that one's yours! As the fairy goes chasing after. And, and you he, just hear Lud just call out, Oi! Could you please keep it a bit cleaner? <laughs> I thought I was! And as he, he mentioned it, you know, Putzes with it a little bit, and he comes back up with a a, a piece that has a like a like a, an almost slimy gray skin on it, like it's exuding its own kind of coating, and just a still slightly twitching gray flesh interior with just the slightest bit of green ooze coming from some identified portion of this fish. <laughs> and he just takes it like a almost like a raw, raw oyster and just tips his head back and just lets it <laughs> slide off the fork slowly, viscously. 
down into his mouth and you can just see it bulge in his throat as he swallows it in one <laughs> big piece. Lovely. And he just sits there with this biggest grin on his face. Oh, yeah. Um, about three individuals who have just quieted their conversations to just watch this obscene spectacle all just make these sudden lurches, one having to kind of get up and immediately rush out towards the outhouses. <laughs> um, oh, that's good stuff. Uh, Y'all want some? I don't mind sharing. No, I'm good. Thank you. As I'm just sitting there dry heaving. <laughs> he cuts another piece off and holds it up on the end of the fork as a small little green dribble drops onto the table. You know, as tempting as that proposition is, I believe I've just finished that whole platter by myself, so I can't as, um, keep polishing off a single other bite. As that, um, as that just glob just kind of hits the table with a uh, Munin hops off um, the L'Oreal's shoulder and just immediately snatches it up, comes back up to her shoulder, where the smell, again, is still quite as pungent, just scarfs it down. Oh, look, 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 Muren's a fan. Oh, here you go, little birdie. Yes, he enjoys unique cuisine. <laughs> and between the, the ferret, the carrion eater, and the gnome, they finish it off in a, a few more minutes, like, scarfing this thing, well, yeah, engulfing it, I should say, is probably more appropriate. At this point, a large, and you can tell, a large portion of the people here have just tuned this out. It's probably some changing of hands of gold coins as bets are made. People He's not really giving it away. Is he? <laughs> you, yeah, you just kind of come upon the scene where everyone's backs are just facing away from you all. <laughs> look, 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 look. Lord, can I get some more fire breath over here? That's just nasty. He he just gives a quiet nod. And just within moments, you all have just three pints of fire breath placed before you. It's like, no need to pay. This one's on the house. Lord, well, you're a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you, sir. I don't suppose you're having a prune juice. That really washes it down good. Afraid we're fresh out. Wraith. Bob. Attack. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear god. So technically that would be a charge when you're falling from above. <laughs> yeah, I'll allow it. It's oh fine. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, Bob, in a fit of suicidal rage, just dives into the pit head first. That should be a plus two. So for I don't the know what to charge. In that. So it's plus two yeah, on the charge. Just, yeah, it's just charge plus two. Uh, it hits. <laughs> now there's the Wait, question. Now there's the, the question take, of falling damage. Yeah, doesn't the thing take falling damage equal to an object of its of the rhinoceros' size? Uh, it's the difference between like an object versus a character. The rules, as written, are assigned to like normal, medium-sized characters falling, and it technically is a charge attack. Hmm. There isn't anything about falling damage for characters like that, so we can play it out however you want. How much does a rhino weigh? I just I, in my uh... I I'm just I'm just going to say this before the ship finds turn. Rule it how you want it to be ruled. Do you want it to be falling damage? Do you want it to be damage per weight? <laughs> um, I feel like the damage per weight... Uh, let me ask you this, though. Are you going to call this a bludgeoning attack if it's damage by weight, or is this environmental He's damage? He's going in face first. This is piercing. True. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm giving it piercing. Okay, I would, I would think... say go by a white rhino's weight. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Well, I don't know if that's the wisest idea, because if this ship mine decides to crawl out of here and throw the rhino back at us, we might be <laughs> running into issues, my friend. I don't think your rhino is going to so one-shot this I, thing and make I it so we're unable. I also don't think the rhino is going to survive this, because it takes just right. as much damage as it deals. Oh yeah, okay, that's yeah, true. This is a one-way trip. 
Fair enough. So the Rhino takes and up. deals 75 damage. <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> oh, Bob, you're a fucking legend. So, uh, did you keep your souls or, or what? We kept our. No one goes in the vet cave. No oh, one. Well, duh. No one. And I'll look right at Mousetail. Give him the finger. No! Cini looks over to I Mouse. I just want to know if she could make a magic rapier, but you know, this is okay. It's okay. Cini looks over to Mouse Tail and like, blah, 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 His ears kind of droop. His ears droop and he drops his club and just kind of drags it into the sand. It is spread. And, and then Vicini just points down to the sleeping pirate to the south. Blah, 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 blah. Oh. We really need a translator in here. <laughs> he said, uh, let's kill those guys. <clears throat> yep, that's totally what he said. So he draws, he draws his little short sword. Fair. So he's, he's going to turn up, you know, one hand... Um, you know, again, trying to block the the light from his face, and and the other is just gonna to reach up slowly to his face with one finger extended, and is just gonna do a nice leisurely dig for some gold. Oh. <laughs> so there's silence for a little while, and the one flashlight points to the other flashlight. Dude's a retard. Let him be. <laughs> <laughs> And the other light continues to shine on Proot and like shines up and down him. He goes, I don't know, man. We were told there was some bad juju coming our way. And the other guy goes, I don't think it's going to be up his nose. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that first and, guy, Dave. And, and Proot will pull his finger down and hold it forward, offering the like an ET get, moment. Get out of here! Get out of here! And then the light will shine away. He's trying to, like, he turns it off and on again, trying to spook you like an animal. Shoot! <laughs> and you are, you, he will follow you until he is certain you are not fine with his sights for him. At that, Prude reaches down to grab his hobo hut and and drags it off in a, in a lateral. Oh, well, you... But just you? Probably. Oh, hey guys, we have uh, official Paizo in chat right now. Oh, what? It's lying to me. That it's sounds hard. really fake. I don't know if I'd believe it, man. They better prove it by giving us something that's official Paizo. I can see the archives. <laughs> Seriously, I don't have that book yet, and I feel like I would like to spice up these encounters by throwing more things at them. Maybe like six CRs higher than what they are. I know some of them want to re-roll with the new PC races. Come on, official Paizo, you know you got us. Alright, I think I'm gonna grab Um, one. actually, no, this that's actually the name, guys. <laughs> I mean, yes, but let's be real. If official Paizo is actually watching us, and let's say they are, sure, they would want to see all of our actual bullshittery when they're watching us, and so that seems very us. Fair you know, enough. begging for shit from I... official Paizo. Fair enough, I fair enough. I think that they just wanted to hear us talk about the balloon condoms. That's all. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm sure they really enjoyed that part. <laughs> I like the fact that you're still streaming. Take your mark! <laughs> your days are numbered. So, um... Yeah, this is actually, um, uh, the sixth day, and it's about dusk. Um, they were, Captain and his first mate were asking if he wanted to push through to the night and um, make Tamron uh, before the morning, and everyone agreed. Uh, he also warned you that uh, this is the area where you need to be wary of the Malthuni privateers. And after sending Gideon into the sky, he reported back to uh, Peyton that there was a boat rapidly approaching. What will you be doing um, to prepare yourselves? 
I'm going to face the direction. Um, said from the east, right? That's right. And pull out a wand. As before, Grimnall just uh, makes point of stringing his bow and setting it on the deck next to him, continuing to row for as long as we can. Uh, Taya makes sure that all the straps of her armor and her shield are nice and tight and ready for battle. Uh, mm -hmm. About how long does it seem like we have before they'll be upon us? Uh, a good 15 minutes. Perfect. That's exactly how long I was hoping you would say. Uh, Tanithil is going to uh, take probably one of the last little bits of bone that's left floating around the ship as a result of this being a rather small ship and that being a very abrupt death. Uh, and hold it aloft. Uh, again, draw open his tome and murmur some very gibberish sounding words as the form of Grandpa, yet again, coalesce around the bit of bone that he has. So yeah, we, I, I just made a skeleton, basically. Cool. Do we have Grandpa anywhere? Um, he was in the other fucking campaign. He was, he might be in one of the older maps if he kept them. Yeah, I don't have the picture anymore. Thank okay. <laughs> Please no. Nailed it. Good job. Dear Lord. His chin is lethal. There. I gave you a nice token in the whatchamacallit. It is the best skeleton token. That's right. That's the one we were using. Where is it? In Galarian it? Adventures text. Thank you, thank you. I will put some stats on this nerd. Alrighty. So, random question. Last adventure we had run into a bit of a trap situation with Azure Fungus that electrified things in a pool. I had kept some of that in wrapped in my bedroll. Did any of that survive after being swatted around and caught on fire? Let me research what Azure Fungus is. I mean, would you have kept it in your bedroll even after we got to town? I don't know why I'm asking. I am absolutely 110% fine with uh, 
Just not having to deal with it and say, like, it died and we're done with it. Curious. You know, yeah, after, what was it, like, two weeks at this point? Okay. I'm fine with working with you on it if you have something cool for it, but otherwise, it's not a big deal. Simpler just to leave without it. Alright, uh, you can tell that now the boat is in sight. Um, it is um, be beginning to be the end of dusk. So. You can barely make out the ship that's coming uh, off into the distance. Uh, it's getting so dark that it's to the point where your night vision, or your dark vision rather, is going to be uh, the best way to see these this approaching vessel. Uh, any of the party need sight? Yep. Um, as it gets dark, I will cast Dancing Lights. Away from our ship, right? Yeah. So they're like, um, they shed 30 feet of red light? Okay. Okay. Right? Uh, I believe so. Let me check. Ten foot radius. Ten foot radius in relation to each other. Wow, they can move 100 feet per round. Yeah, about how far are they from us, bad guys? Uh, they're just outside of your normal dark vision range, about 60 feet away. All right, I'm going to cast the lights over top of their boat. Okay. So it lights up their boat. They have a range of 130 feet on them. So we either made some bandits nervous or just scared the bloody hell out of some nighttime fishermen. As the orbs illuminate that uh, that distant boat, uh, you can hear a thump into the side of the boat, and you look right beneath. Uh, where your oar is, Taya, and there is a crossbow bolt lodged into the hull. Let's have initiative. So I take it probably not just some fisherman. <laughs> I mean, wow. I mean, spear fisherman, maybe? Crossbow fisherman? It's possible. Don't fucking lie to yourself. Now for some crossbow fisherman fighting music. See that. That works too. All of you are expecting and ready for this. Uh, as you hear that uh, that first crossbow bolt hit the side of the ship, that lets you know that uh, this is not just a simple fishing ship. What do you do? Well, 
Let me tell you how this fucking skeleton doesn't start with any actual real gear. That's not helpful to me at all. Um... I guess we get to just do the good old fashioned power up the sword deal. Uh, actually, how far away are they? Okay, so this is this is actually accurate. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, then yes, definitely powering up the sword with some lead blades. And, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's about it. I'm gonna use Grandpa as cover. Because that's what he's here for. Poor Grandpa. Uh, it's, it's a joy to uh, be able to save and guard his family once again. Let's go ahead and get it. Another crossbow bolt flies towards Taya. Now this is quite a range. Just checking the uh, the range here. Uh, 80 feet. It doesn't hit. I imagine it doesn't. Especially with a 21 AC. No. So yet another bolt hits the rim of the uh, the ship. Grimnall. Alright. Grimnall leaves the station at the oars, hops up on the raised platform over here, draws his longbow back, and takes aim. Uh, let's see. From over here, do I have five foot up to here? Uh, that's difficult terrain okay. uh, going up. So I'll just stand where I am and shoot over uh, Talia's shoulder then. Using his move action to take uh, focus. One second. Way too many buffs on this sheet. Alright, Pongo, what is the range for your... 110's composite. 110? Okay, good. Alright, and you can see fairly well because of the uh, light that's over there. And you can tell that it hit the uh, the front of, this, of their sailboat. Another volley. Oh and, and this time, Taya, you actually get pegged right in the shoulder by this thing. But ignore the sneak attack. So, 14? 7. Oh, 5. Sorry. Only 5. These guys are expert marksmen. So another bolt hits you right in the uh, the chest as you're reaching around to pull the bolt out of your shoulder. Now it's for seven. Taya, it's your turn. Just out of curiosity, do any of these bolts have uh, like ropes attached to them or anything? Uh, they do not happen to, no. They're not. I am going to go total defense. All right, eat. Mm. 
shit. Okay, sorry. I, uh... One of these programs I'm in, I'm drawing while we play. Uh, doesn't let me use push. It's very aggravating. Anyway. Um, fortunately, Eve comes prepared for many situations. And although these people are a little further than perhaps what she would like, um, she does pull out a light crossbow. And... She can't really see that far, but with the lights, she can probably aim pretty well. She's going to actually aim for one of the people on the boat. Right. And shoot with her light crossbow. Horribly. Not yeah, that one doesn't even make it to the boat. It kind of skims across the water. Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> kind of half lowers her crossbow and tilts her head to the side, rolls her eyes. Can we just let them board us? Why am I not surprised that you're the one suggesting that? Peyton. Huh. Unfortunately, I did not become equipped, equipped for every uh, thing. Alright, uh... I guess I'm gonna use the one. So I'm gonna raise the one. Uh, please don't come further. Stay away. And blast the first one. Only one missile. It's a one, so it's only first level. Mm -hmm. Eve's gonna be like, I like the style of your warning shots. <laughs> yeah, he kind of shrugs to the side as you hit him. But he raises his crossbow, nevertheless. Um, let me step out of there. I'm just gonna back up here so I'm out of hopefully their crossbow range. Okay. Tanithil. I literally don't have a single fucking ranged weapon, do I? Oh no, wait, I got a sling. Alright, we're gonna sling some motherfuckers then. You could start chucking pieces of Grandpa. Yes, but I feel like I'd potentially miss. So instead of losing with <laughs> Grandpa and making him worse off, we're gonna, you know, shoot bullets at him. Ah. Not bad. You mean you don't want a chittering skull over there just biting their ankles? Tempting with those eggs. So after the, what is it, 50 foot range for a sling? Uh, I believe so. Hold on, let me double check. I see, yeah, I see a range of 50. Um, is that just negative two per... Yeah, it's just a negative two, so it'd be uh, 18. Yeah. Uh, that manages to uh, to hit him on the other side. Je or, uh, jerks to the other side after the first bolt hit his left shoulder, the bullet hit his right shoulder. You see him kind of crouch down in the ship. Damage is damage. I'll fucking take it. So, uh... I think... Oh, no, he doesn't have the feet. He was gonna get fancy and prone shoot, but uh, he doesn't do that. You can do that with crossbows just by default. Oh, I thought it had a feat for it, but... Regular bows, you need it. Oh, okay. Well then, yeah. He is prone. Because he's a real asshole.
<laughs> yeah, so that happens. Poor Taya. Dude, what the fuck? I'm assuming Taya again. <laughs> um, not necessarily. No, there is a chance that the oarsmen might get it. So you're one, and the other oarsmen are two and three. Yeah, you get it. Criminal. All right. Um, I ended up having to recalc on my sheet, so my numbers were wrong. So everything is finally corrected. He will uh, take his focus aim, or bullseye shot, I think it's technically called, and whichever ones are standing. We'll take a shot at the next one in line. All right, well done. He is standing and he is pegged with an arrow. Basically what you see uh, Grimnall doing is he has a, a quick draw shield that he's slinging into place after each shot, slinging it back, taking a shot and putting it back down. Uh, due to quick draw and the uh, combined actions that make it a free action to do that. All right. Uh, I'm gonna five foot behind Taya, uh, getting ready to take her place as needed. Most hexes are like 30 feet, I thought. So is it in the actual hex description then? Are the boats getting closer during this? Uh, no, it turns out that they're not uh, they're not moving from here. It's like they uh, reduce their sails. Okay. And does that mean our rowers are still rowing us away then? Yes. Well, the rowers on the left, but um, the rowers on the right after all the the crossbows or the bolts hitting the side of the ship, they have stopped rowing and they are now cowering. Gotcha. Actually exhibiting a sense of self-preservation. That's unusual. Alright. And another bolt. Towards Taya. That's impressive. You were still doing full defense? Or no, Taya? Yes. Alright, so that misses. Uh, he is going to drop down as well. And this guy is going to shoot one more time. That Taya. I don't know what you did to them, Taya. Wow. Holy what the shit. Fuck? These dice are fucking rigged. Yeah, these dice are uh, increasing the CR of this encounter. <laughs> so, uh, eight points. I'm going to take this opportunity to remind everyone that we all have a... Uh, Nice little scale of Kassan's boon. Which is a one use reroll. Just saying. Right. Might come in handy. He's dropping down as well. Taya, it's your turn. Uh is there any way that I could I could get cover from this area? Because it's somewhat higher than the uh, rest of the yeah, you can you can go inside if you want to. That'll give you full cover. Uh, you can climb up to the top um, and go prone to get partial cover. Uh, Tayo will go inside the cabin, uh, but leave the door open so she can observe the situation, uh, and also call out to the two oarmen to uh, continue rowing, or else we're going to go in circles. All right.
I'm just going to leave the, um, the yellow dot up there to signify that you're inside. All right, Eve. All right, well, uh, I guess I'll just take another pot shot. Uh, nothing for it. Just lifts it back up again. Takes another shot at that first guy in the front there, if at all possible. All right. And Lines it, it up. I think it's a negative four to hit when they're prone ranged. Correct. All right, so that's going to hit the boat. Anything else, Eve? Peyton. All right. So I looked it up. This particular hex does not have a range on it. So I'm going to give the front guy the evil eye. Um, and do a negative two on his AC. All right, cool. So he'll have to make a will save DC 14. Sweet. He's now hexed for six rounds. Get, get the one in the front! I click the button. It is Tenethil. Alrighty. Uh, Tan is going to probably just sling this guy again, I guess. But wholeheartedly agree. Oh, that's good. That uh, we we should just take them on head on. All right. Well, the uh, the oarsmen on the the right are not rowing, and the ship is kind of um, turning towards the other boat. Um, with the oarsmen prone, Gimnal and Taya, well, actually, Gimnal is open. Eve, Taya, and Tanithil are all, they all have cover because they're firing from beneath the, the railing of the ship. So this is going for Gimnal. It's the side of the boat. Oh, now they decide to stop critting. The criminal steps up to the railing. Focuses carefully on that first one. Red steadying his hand across the, the weaving ship. And takes another shot. All right. Again, into this, the front of the boat. Gonna yell at the the oarsmen's behind him, not next to him. Keep rowing. Bring us to the starboards, at the right, whatever you call it. All right. Swinging his shield back in front of him. Another bolt. Slams Gimnall. God damn you crits. Jesus. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I know, right? I would complain, but I don't have time for that tonight. Really rolling really 20s or 1s, man. <laughs> that's right, that's how we do it. He's, he's over there just flipping a coin. <laughs> I could roll, like, uh, whisper, GM whisper, if you'd like. No, that's okay. How 
How did we do? 21? That's a match. It is indeed. Alright. Taya, you are inside. I am inside. Not much I can do, so. Alright, Eve. Uh, second verse, same as the first. Alrighty. Uh, she lands up another shot with a crossbow, still grumbling. And still at that first guy, by the way. Alright. She's that... determined. Yeah. So it's a negative four, but it's a negative two to the armor class, which means that that is a hit. So another two damage. So that bolt just skimmed his back. And we have Peyton. Alright. I'm gonna, this time, target the second one in line. With a hex as well. But minus two to its attack roll. Okay. We'll save coming up. Did you guys buy another uh, heal one? Um, Probably not. One second, I've got that feet. I gotta read what it says. It lets you do it a second time, it doesn't force a second save. So it takes another action to do it again. He just saves, but he still has it for one round. Yes. Okay. Oh, but this one is the one that I can only do it once per day, so it's fine. It doesn't matter anyways. Um, so I'll do that, and then I'm going to move this way. Can I take out a potion as I do so? Uh, I think so. Is it something that's strapped to your body, or do you have to, like, root through your bags for it? I'd have it, like, strapped to a boat. And I would say so. And I'm going to hold it out. Drink this! Alright, Tanithil. Slinging time. Mostly because I don't have anything else. I think that might actually do it. Is it the guy in the front? Yeah, the lead guy. Okay, yeah, he is... Um... Minus two to his AC. That strikes him. Max damage. Got him square in the dome with that bullet. Yeah, he wasn't expecting that one. He is going to fire at Grimnall still. He likes that target. I'd rather you be hitting me than the other people, so... Okay. Alright. That one, uh... You're getting quite a, uh, a collection of bolts right in that... that grouping. Free ammo. Mm. It's like the first. Once again, repeat. Focus bow shot. Hey! All right. I hate thing. First one, of course. How's the ship rowing progress? Uh, the ship is uh, turning. So, in, in lieu of turning everything, I'm just going to uh, to move it closer. Not trying for a mechanical intimidate, but Grimnall would will shout out over the water. Turn back while you can. There's more of us than you. You're one down. 
Bugger off! It's a little freaky because the tokens are like at a different rate than the rest. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Amazingly, that actually lined up with the grid. <laughs> Did it really? I think everyone's token was right flat in the middle of a square. Well, cool. Let's keep it. All right, so uh, this guy is actually hoisting the sail once again and uh, they're trying to get closer to you meanwhile the guy in the back is still firing and this time he's firing at Tenethil but Tenethil you will get cover partial cover which won't help Yeah, um, ow. Yeah, stop that, man. And after you're done all the profanity directed at me, you will take 12 points of damage. Holy. Taya. Uh, what kind of potion was I handed? Cure light wounds? Peyton. 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 Um, it was a care light one. Okay, and that's 1d something? 1d8 plus 1. Alright, I am going to chug that down. And that's about it, so I'll go ahead and do the end of turn. Closer. Excellent. Um, Eve is once again uh, going to keep just throwing out some fire. However, um, she's going to keep her position even though she could go to the front of the boat. She's not 100% sure that's what she wants. So she's going to stay where she is for now and shoot. All right. And it'll be at the next closest guy. Yeah. All right. This guy that's putting that up the. Uh, all right. Does manage to hit him. So the middle guy isn't crouching down anymore? Uh, no, he is up. Peyton. Alright, I'm gonna like move here and peek around like the cabin area and evil eye the middle guy again. Um, negative two to AC. All right. For six rounds, yeah. If, if he doesn't make the save. She yeah. doesn't. Ow. <laughs> oh, ow. Ow, my face. 
Always the elegant one. Yes, always. Uh, fucking Christ, dude. Um, I don't think I have anything that can actually help me here either. Nope, you're done. Uh, okay, I guess just more sling and then uh, reaction to hit the dirt after I sling. Alright. At the middle guy, obviously. Alright, that does rebound off the, the front of the ship. Alright, that's fine. I'm, I'm hitting the dirt. That one's done. Gimnall. Gimnall slings his bow over his shoulder and moves up to the prow, kneeling down in front of uh, as many people as he can. He gets situates himself between them, going full defense. Okay. Um, at this, the boat is starting to move closer. You see him take out a vial and toss it over after he steps up. And you see the vial splash in the water right in front of the boat. The, um, the water begins to burn. As some uh, alchemical liquid continues to flare. The next one in the back runs up and does the same thing. This time, hitting the bow of the ship as it bursts into flame. Taya. Uh, Taya is going to roll her eyes at Tanithil's cries of pain and wait as the ship moves closer. He's been doing. At All this right. point in time, she's, you know, kind of huffing, loading her bow, shooting, kind of staring bored as if she really wishes that there were things on the boat. <laughs> Got that little twinkle in her eyes every time they, she realizes they're getting a little closer. A little closer. Is that the first guy? Yep, always the guy in the front. Alright, so he has, let's see, he is standing up. And You're at 80. 65 feet, negative 2. Yeah, my crossbow is 80 feet, so that does hit. All right, so he has another flask um, in his hand, and you just shoot a bolt right into his, his, the muscle of his arm that, that has that flask, and it just drops the flask right onto the boat. And you see fire uh, coming from below. Peyton. All right. Uh, the guy in the back, I'm going to target with Misfortune. Basically, disadvantage, all right? Let's see what it's with. Or, uh, will. It's 
taking it. Um, I think I'm going to stay right where I'm at. Okay, Tanithil. <laughs> um... Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna move action stand up, and I uh, can't do that because it takes a move action to load this fucker. So we're good here on the ground. I'd like to not get hit in the face by any other fucking twenties. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what are the chances? It's only a one out of twenty chance, right? It's a five percent chance. Yes. Oh, they're crossbows. You've been that's... getting a lot of five percent chances lately. They're crossbows. It's ten percent. I do not like my odds. I'm good down here. All right. Does the momentum of the boat look like it's going to get within five feet of each other in the next six seconds? Yes. All right. Grimnal uh, pulls out his long sword and readies an action to leap across the bow to smash into the closest bandit that he can reach. Nice. About thing is full defense in the process. Alright. Just to move the small boat. I was trying. But it wants to pick up everything. All right. The tip of this boat slams into yours, um, temporarily giving everyone a bit of a shift. I'll need everyone to make a dexterity, or I'm sorry, a reflex saving throw. Would it help any if I was jumping in the meantime? Yes. You you don't need the deck save. All right, you all keep your footing. And uh, Grimnall, you are over. You are now standing on a boat that is now on fire. It's the smoke and the flames as the two ships crunch and grind together. Grimnall leaps through the air with a two-handed overhand slash. Oh, yeah. How do you want to do that? Splitting him in twain. Probably not, no. Just cleaving his sword into the clavicle and neck of his opponent. Right. Staring over the fallen body at the next guy in line as he swings his shield around in front of him and just glares at him. He's already demoralized by uh, the witch's hex as well. Uh, he is still prone as well. So he's just looking up at you as the guy who was standing in front of him fell into the fire. Uh, you can tell that his uh, motivation to continue to fight is gone. And he will show that by dropping his crossbow and putting up his hands. Taya. Uh, Taya is going to come out and hop onto the deck with the rest of her companions and get ready to hop over if she is needed. Okay, Eve. Um... Eve is going to... Uh, well, we're close now. There's only one guy left. This is so disappointing. Uh, she'll just keep shooting. Nice. All right. He's like, oh, man, we could have had something great here. Didn't going to did, die before I even get there. Didn't he, like, just give up or something? He totally did, but... <laughs> yes. What's that mean? You're also talking about the tiefling. I mean... Oh, shit. Yes! As oh, said. that is sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. That, that bears a description. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you're welcome to uh, to give us a description for that, Eve. So Eve sees him give up. However, she's felt really robbed. She she had a taste for for battle and combat and their adventure into the uh, for the Everflame, and so she sees this guy and he gives up and she's she's got her crossbow loaded. She's looking at it. She looks at him and she says, "Screw it." Shoot! And nails him right between the eyes. Thunk. The bolt goes through his head, into the mast of the sailing ship, and he just lays back, with his eyes still fixated on Gimnal. Combat is over. What? Uh, he gave up! What? Why? I wasn't done yet. But he gave up. Grimmel just looks back over to Eve and shrugs, like, oh well, he beat me to it. Uh, how, how bad is the fire? It can be uh, stomped out fairly easy. Okay. Uh, we Grimnall... could have turned him into the officials. Mechanics, by the way, Grimnall stomps out the fire on the small, uh, smaller rowboat and uh, starts checking uh, or if they had any... Uh, Cargo or uh, items amongst themselves. All right. Um, Captain, as you're stomping that, I says, Oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Don't stomp out that fire. Get what you're going to get soon. We're going to let that burn. If any more of those privateers see this boat here, they'll know what we did. Let it go down. All right, so uh, Grimmel will instead uh, bodily grab these bodies, bodily grab these bodies, yeah, and start um, hefting them up over for Toya to grab. Okay. And bring on board our ship before uh, clambering up over the railing for of him uh, for himself. All right. Uh, as he steps over he uh gives the the bow of the smaller ship one last shove with his boot heel pushing it away taya is going to remove multiple crossbow bolts from her body <laughs> so you said you wanted the um the screenshots for the loot not the copy paste they're they're easier because the copy and paste just slaughters the text. It's literally up to you, man. Whichever you feel is easier for yourself. You've got enough stuff on your plate already. faster to screen cap it and dump it in discord Wait. were those uh, alchemist fires expended yes they were both expended um, I need a perception check as whoever is on the boat is looking around on the fire boat or our boat on the fire boat. Oh, nice. Okay. You easily see... Um, a small lockbox. And upon the uh, one of the privateers, you see a key dangling there. Putting two, two and two together... Literally. Like, were those items uh, per person or collective? Per person. Uh, don't forget, um... Alex's character has a thing where he just touches it and he knows what it is. Yeah, I, I can just understand what shit is at this point. Wrong thing.
Now for that feather token anchor. <laughs> <laughs> dot dot dot. I'll be good. You know, honestly, give that to uh let's see. Who who's not going to abuse the hell out of that? Taya? Probably Taya. Wait, what? <laughs> give it to Taya. There we go. No explanation needed or, or wanted. Just here you go. What are you handing me? Uh, feather token anchor. Wait, say that again? A feather token anchor. Okay. You can Google it easily enough. Alright, so I have one more thing to uh, to read or paraphrase basically and then we're going to wrap up the evening. So, after the battle, uh, the captain basically pushes, puts as much distance as possible between the Black Mist and the privateer's vessel as it starts going up in flames. The captain thanks you um, and suggests that uh, you stay at the Gar's last meal. It's a good, safe establishment down near the water in Tamran. And as the boat draws in, you see in the dark, Tamarin glitters with hundreds of tiny lights emanating from the windows and lamps that dot this city. It has a look of a new town, built primarily of wood, though some older buildings linger here and there. Many of it shows the signs of damage from the war with Molthun, which is to the south. There's cracked walls and burnt remnants that can be seen even from this distance and fresh scars from that long conflict. is basically the best possible map of Tamron I could find. Oh, it's part of the map thing we could come up on by scratch, so hey. Looks great. Oh, don't knock it. Alright, and you have made it. Now, uh, next session, you will uh, be looking for uh, someone named Reganar. And good job getting here. Any questions? What was the spelling of the person we need to find? Uh, did we level? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Not just yet. Figured I'd ask. It's a good question. Especially after all those crits. Jesus. Yeah, that didn't suck. How long did it take us to get to the to the port from when we left the fight? Um More or less of a day. Yeah, that night, like around uh, two or three in the morning. So basically, on the sixth day, you made it because the oarsmen uh, rode through the night sometimes with your assistance. Gotcha. Uh, thank God we're off that damn boat. Beat on solid ground again. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for playing, guys. I'm going to head out, but uh, you guys have a great week. Thanks right. for running, Mike. Have a good night, and thank you as always. Good night, Mike. Cool. Good night. Bye, all. I got it in.